Of course the persecution is going to come. Of course the accusations are going to come. But God told us as the people chosen of the Almighty God to glory in these trials and tribulations. Because every time they come against us with these persecutions, they're putting another star in our crown. They're making us greater in the kingdom of heaven. They're dividing us the, the sheep from the goats and, and the lambs, and there's a separation setting in. I want to clarify something here, a statement that I made, and some people misunderstood what I was saying. I was talking about the great charismatic movement, the great outpouring of the Spirit, and the, the supernatural things that have been happening in many of the denominational churches. And I said, there's no such thing as a spirit-filled Methodist. There's no such thing as a spirit-filled Baptist. I want to qualify to you what I was saying. I was talking about these people that are having this supernatural experience with the living God, and they're still trying to hide under the shelter of a denomination. And it isn't going to do you any good. It won't do you any good. Somewhere along the way, you're going to have to stand before God. And you're going to have to take your place before Him and be a witness to the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't be concerned about what the world thinks about you. Why, I could care less that the world looks at me as a holy roller. I praise and thank God because I believe that the kingdom of the living God is going to be filled with holy rollers. I believe it's going to be filled with shouting. I believe it's going to be filled with praises unto the Almighty God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. And I want to be counted with the people of God. I want to take a stand. I don't want to hide under some denomination. I don't want to hide under some social structure. I want to stand right out in the middle of it and say, as for me, why well, I made a decision a long time ago that I would give my life to Jesus Christ, and I haven't changed down through these years. It's the same as it was when I knelt on my knees and made that decision before God because I knew in my heart and in my soul it will profit us nothing. The social structure or what people think about us has no meaning whatsoever. And people who are, are Catholics or Methodist or Baptist or whatever you're trying to hide under and you've had this supernatural experience with the Almighty God for God in heaven's sakes, come out from among them, God says, and establish yourselves for what you are and who you are before the living God. What difference does labels make? Why, I'm so thankful to God to be counted worthy. If they call Jesus Christ our Lord a whoremonger, if they called him a drunkard, if he was called all these names, didn't he tell us if they did these things to me, what are they going to do to you? But again, what will it profit a man if he gains all the recognition of the world? If the world looks upon us as being some, some great leader, or if the world looks at us as being uh, some, some great personality, one of these th days all these things shall pass away. They'll disappear into nothingness. The only thing that they will ever stand for is our condemnation at the judgment bar of the living God. It doesn't make any difference what people think about us. It doesn't make any difference what people say about us. When the supposed Jesus movement first started, it was called a youth movement. And everyone was looking at it suddenly that the dope pushers left the streets and they threw their dope into the garbage cans. And they picked up Bibles and they began to go back out into the streets and to tell others that they had found the answer, that they had found the truth. And then God began to pour out His Spirit and there was a great and a mighty move of the living God and people everywhere 
began to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they began to have a supernatural experience with the living God. But then like everything else, Satan got his hand into it. And the next thing you know, they were dividing themselves into spirit-filled Baptist and spirit-filled this and spirit-filled that. Let me tell you something, brother or sister. If you're spirit-filled, you're a spirit-filled holy roller. Praise the Lord. And as for me, I'm glad to be counted as one of those people. I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of because I know that as surely as I am living, that this old world is coming to an end. It's all over. You can see the handwriting on the wall that it is absolutely and positively finished. Now, when scientists are telling you that they don't understand how this earth how the, the, it's even holding together. And uh, on different surveys in the National Geographic magazine, a group of scientists went all the way across the surface of the earth, even across the, the, the bottom of the ocean, and they followed the St. Andreas Fault, and they found that crack in the earth that it was just ready to give. And they can't understand how it's even holding together. And I think the beautiful part about that was that it goes right through the Mount of Olives in the Holy Land, right where Jesus said that he would set his foot upon the Mount of Olives. And he told us that the mountains would be moved out of their places. He told us that in the end times that all these things would happen. And then he said, that the moon would turn into blood. Oh, you say, that's incredible. That's impossible. How could it be possible? Why, it's so simple that a child could understand it. So foolish and so simple. He also said that the water would turn into blood. You say, that's incredible. It's an impossibility. It could never happen. Right on the beaches in California, I have seen what they call the red tide. When the oxygen is taken out of the water, it becomes a black, thick, sticky substance, and even the fish cannot live in it. They come to the top and die because they cannot breathe. And the stench around the ocean is something terrible. As simple as extracting the oxygen out of the water. And what do you have? Blood. Blood. The same thing with the moon. The same identical thing. The same thing. Why should it seem a thing incredible to you that the God who created the earth, could pull the oxygen out of the water that he put into it. Does that make any sense to you? All these things are being fulfilled. Day after day, hour after hour, moment. Momentarily, we shall see the coming of Jesus Christ our Lord. And he said that the mountains would be moved out of their places. And one of these days, this old earth is going to begin to rock and to shake with a great and mighty earthquake. And let me tell you, unbeliever, one of these days I'm going to meet you at the judgment bar of God. And believe me, you're going to be a believer then. You're going to be a believer. Because the word of God says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess him as King of King and Lord of Lords. And let me tell you that on the other side, you're going to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're going to believe God the Creator, because when it is all finished, when all has passed away, and we stand at the judgment bar of the living God, and all these things suddenly are revealed to us, and we know beyond in the shadow of doubt what our inevitable fate is, there will be no unbelievers at the judgment bar of the living God. How do we make peace with God? 
How do we find salvation? Why, it's so simple that a little child can understand it. We were made in sin, created in iniquity. We are sin from our mother's womb. But God in his divine mercy made a way of escape for us through the shedding of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Salvation isn't some great traditional religious uh, uh, organization. It isn't that at all. It's the simplicity of coming to that place in our lives that we realize, I am a sinner. I have broken the laws of the living God. I am alienated from the Almighty God. And if I should die in the condition that I am in, I know that my soul would be lost. And to find a place before God, regardless of where that place is, wherever you are out there, make an altar wherever you are and just kneel down before God and realize there is something wrong in my life and say unto the Almighty God, my Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I believe that he shed his blood for the remission of my sins. I believe that he died and that he rose from the dead and that he sits at the right hand of God the Father this very moment, making intercession for my sins. Lord, you said that you would not turn anyone away that comes to you. And Lord, I'm coming to you today on bended knees. I'm coming to you and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Make me a new creature. Lord, I know that you have heard me. I know that you have answered me. And I know, according to your word, that I am saved. God didn't make it an impossible thing for you to be able to reach him, but he made it so simple. I've seen small children that suddenly the convicting power of the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And you would think to look at them that they had committed the greatest sins in the world. As you could see the convicting spirit of God upon them and see them kneel down before God and cry out unto the Almighty God and see the expression on their faces completely change and know that they had had a supernatural experience with the Almighty God. God has not made a way that each and every one of us have to scramble around to try to find a way to find peace with the Almighty God. But it made it so simple and so plain. And there is not any person that on the other side will be an unbeliever. Because regardless of what tomorrow may hold, you and I, each and every one of us, shall meet one of these days at the judgment bar of the living God. Yes, there is room at the cross for you. Is a shelter in which we can hide And it's great The Tony and Susan Alamo program has come to you from the Grand Ole Opry House in Niceville, Tennessee.